The 2020-2021 NBA season opens up on Tuesday, and that means one thing. It's prediction season. It is everyone's chance to make a bunch of random guesses on what might occur this year for the sole purpose of bragging if they get it right. And there's really no downside, because if you're wrong, well, you can just pretend you never said anything in the first place, which is exactly what I plan to do with these bold predictions. Now, before we get into the bold predictions, I think it's important to clarify exactly what that term means, because nowadays, it is often misused. A bold prediction is not just a prediction. It should be a prediction that is very unexpected. Let's give some examples so we're all clear here. I think that Trey Young is going to play really bad defense this season. While this might qualify as a prediction to some, it is certainly not bold. I don't even think we can consider this underlined or italicized because it is a known fact that the only thing that scares Trey Young more than playing defense is a razor. Yikes. Now, if you were going to say something more like Lingo Sports content creator Jeff Wall is going to grow hair this year, that would certainly be bold. Would you be right? No, but it is without a doubt a bald prediction. I mean, bold, bold prediction. Anyways, bold prediction number one. Zion Williamson gets voted onto the All-NBA second team. That might not sound that bold at first, but think about all of the top talent around the league at the forward position. LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard. That's four right there. Meaning for this prediction to come to fruition, he would have to beat out at least one of those guys, along with other big name talent like Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, and Pascal Siakam. So why am I so confident Zion can pull this off? Well, in case you haven't heard, the guy's a freak. Dirk couldn't make the adjustment. Zion got his own rebound. Oh, he just took it away from Damian Lee. This is ridiculous. This, that should be that should be illegal. That's just bully ball. Williamson averaged 37.4 points per 100 possessions in just 19 games last season. And if that sounds ridiculous, it's because it is. That puts him second all-time among qualified rookies, right in between Joel Embiid and some other guy you might have heard of named Michael Jordan. Zion is truly one of the strongest and most athletic players we've ever seen come into the league, but that doesn't mean there's not concerns. He has already suffered a major knee injury, and his defense last year was suspect to say the least. If he wants a chance to make any All-NBA team, that part of his game will have to take major strides, and I truly believe it will. Listen, Zion was a defensive monster in college. It wasn't even two years ago that we were watching Zion tear it up for Duke, and it wasn't just on the offensive side of the ball. His incredible athleticism, mixed in with a fairly high basketball IQ, allowed him to be a truly feared matchup for opposing offenses. So what went wrong last year? His biggest issue was a loss of lateral quickness, which seemingly stemmed from a gain of weight. Yeah, listen, it was no secret Zion packed on a few pounds between last offseason, the time he missed due to injury, and the additional time missed when the season was suspended. But now, Zion has come back slimmer, reportedly losing about 25 pounds. He's already looked a little bit better on that end in his two preseason games. And with a jam-packed 72-game schedule ahead of him, he will likely drop even more weight. And as the season goes on, I believe we will see Zion progress towards being a very solid defensive player. Bold prediction number two. The Phoenix Suns will finish as a top three seed in the stacked Western Conference. They're currently projected by Vegas to finish seventh, and I know what you're thinking. Yes, they added Chris Paul, but that's not enough to overcome some of the very real flaws. Stop right there. You are so stupid. Don't doubt Chris Paul. Don't do it. Wins follow Paul around like it's nobody's business. When he went from the Hornets to the Clippers, the Clippers immediately got much better, and the Hornets, well, they got much worse. When he went from the Clippers to the Rockets, the Rockets immediately got much better, and the Clippers got much worse. Last year, when he was traded to the Thunder against all odds, even with the loss of OKC's two stars, 
they still got better and the Rockets, yeah, you guessed it. There is a reason that everywhere he goes, the team performs exponentially better with him on the floor than off of it. And beyond just Chris Paul, the Suns should be better anyways. Devin Booker is right on the cusp of superstardom. DeAndre Ayton, Mikael Bridges, and Cameron Johnson should continue to improve. And even their biggest loss in Kelly Oubre Jr. was replaced by a solid veteran in Jay Crowder. This team is going to finish top three in the West. Book it. Bold prediction number three. Luka Doncic averages 35 plus points per game. Only five players in NBA history have ever accomplished that feat. Will Chamberlain, Rick Barry, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and James Harden. And after this year, you'll be able to add a sixth name to that list. Luka Doncic. Finney Smith to inbound. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer! Last year could not have gone much better for Doncic. In just his second year, he made the All-NBA first team, finished fourth in MVP voting, and averaged about 29 points, nine boards, and nine assists. And it's left a lot of people wondering how much better he can really get. And you're going to see this season. I think everything is setting up right now for Doncic having to carry the load even more so than last year. The second scoring option for the Mavs is, of course, Kristaps Porzingis. And he's still recovering from that torn meniscus he suffered in the playoffs. And he won't be back until at least January, according to head coach Rick Carlisle. And honestly, given his injury history, there's no guarantee that when he does return, he'll stay healthy. What that means is there's probably going to be some more shots for Luka. And as good as he was last year, he did only shoot 31.6% from three. And for someone with the drive of Doncic, that means room for improvement. He has no doubt been working tirelessly on his jumper all offseason. The added shots combined with the potential added efficiency, that could mean a whole lot of added points for Doncic. Not to mention he only played about 33 minutes per game last year, and with how competitive the West is projected to be, that number might just soar. Luka Doncic, 35 plus points per game. BOLD!